Hey there my floor designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video in this tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and link the animation here with the input field. So essentially we're gonna use a concept called variables that will store the value that the user enters and passes it on to the button, which then passes it on to the Rive animation, right? So to give you an example, at this moment, because nothing is there in the input field, the value is zero. So if I press on start, nothing really happens, which is exactly what we want, right? But if I enter a value, it should move on. So if I go ahead and I enter a value of let's say 780 and I press start, you can see that it happens, but there is a weird issue over here. I have to reset the animation. So I can go here, click on this and reset the animation and the animation should successfully reset. And now if I go ahead and enter 780 and then I press start, now you can see the image happens, but it only goes till 780, right? So we're gonna understand how to do this. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so now let's understand how this is actually going to work. We need to think this through very well. Now, if I go to the interaction tab and I tap on the button, we can see that when I release my finger, which is basically touch up, we basically trigger the animation. So we have the input, which is start animation, and then it starts the animation. But we need to actually decide when do we pass on the score? Because first we need to capture the score and essentially the order would be, we type something over here, we capture that score and then we pass on that score to the Rive animation when I tap on this. So essentially when I release my finger, I want this button to do two things. I want it to start the animation as well as pass on that information to the Rive animation. So what I can also do here is I can go ahead and in fact, let me just go ahead and I can duplicate this by pressing Command C, Command V. Does it even duplicate? No? Mm, okay, it looks like I Command D. Okay, it works. So now here, I will choose the final score. Now, the thing is, at this point, I can set the final score to whatever we want, but I actually need to capture this information that I stored here in the input field and then pass that on over here. So it's going to start from here and then pass it on to the button. I'm going to release and I'm going to start the animation as well as pass on the Rive input at the same time, right? So now we need to basically store this information. And to do that, what we need is something called as a variable. This variable is very similar to how you would do it in Figma as well. If you have done Figma prototyping, I highly recommend you check out my course on creating complex interactions and animations using prototypes in Figma. So I leave a link down in the description or add a playlist somewhere. You can check that out, but it's very similar to how you would do this over here as well. So what we need is we need to go to this thing called variables and we need to add a variable. Now you can add it to a particular component or the main screen or you know the, the whole project. Now in this case, we only have one screen so it doesn't really matter where we add it. So we're just gonna add it to the global. And here we have three options, you know, just like in Figma, we have a number, string, and Boolean. In Figma, we have colors as well, but here we just have number variable. So in this case, because we're just gonna store a, a numerical value, I'm gonna go ahead and choose number. And we're gonna go ahead and call this variable something, right? I'm gonna go ahead and call this final score. So this variable called final score is what is going to hold our value. Now, by default, the value is going to be zero. All right, which means the button, when we release it, by default, it's going to pass on zero, right? Because we didn't do anything to it. The default is zero. So if I come here to value, I can click to add an actual value, all right? Or I can come here and click on this plus button and I can choose a variable. So now I can choose final score. So now whatever is this final score is going to be passed on to the Rive animation. Now at this point, we are setting it to be zero. But we want to be able to change it from zero to something else, right? And that something else is basically what we add over here. If we don't add anything here, it is going to be zero by default. But if we go ahead and, and type something over here, it is then going to update this final score value to something and then pass it on. So how do we make sure that when I type something over here, that value I type is updating this final score value because right now this final score value is zero, but we want it to change. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to the text field event for the score. And here, when I finish typing, which is basically the focus ended, the moment I press enter, 
At that point, we want to pass on the value that the user wrote and update that variable called final score, all right? So what that basically means is at this point, we want to click on the plus here and we want to choose an option called as set variable. So we're basically changing the variable or setting the variable, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click on this variable and we're gonna say final score. So that is the name of the variable. And what we want to do is we want to change it to whatever the user input over here. Now this requires a little bit of coding. And if you have basic computer science knowledge or coding knowledge, you will know what this is. But if you don't, you can just use ChatGPT and you will figure this out, right? So here, what we basically want to say is when I finish typing, when the focus is ended, update or set the variable, which is final score, set it to something. And that something is basically going to be over here. So the way you want to write expressions over here is that you always have to choose the component or the element and then define the property. So in this case, the component is our input field. So if I type in score, that's the name of our input field. As you can see, it says text field on the right side. And I hit dot and then I can choose all the properties, all right? Which property of the score? Is it the text field event? Is it the child count, current state, height, index, what? What we want to do is choose value. And as you can see, it says current value of the text field. If you see down here, when I hover, it says the current value of the text input field. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a value. And I'll click away. So essentially what's gonna happen is when I don't type anything, it's going to be zero by default. But the moment I type something, it's going to go ahead and change it from zero and update that final score value to score value. And then this gets then passed on to here, which is our button, and that gets updated over here. So once it's updated over here, it gets updated over here, and then it is sent to the Rive animation, all right? So now let's test this and see if it works. All right, so now at this point, the value of the variable is actually zero. So which means when I tap on the button and I release my finger, you can see nothing actually happens, all right? Now, if I go ahead and tap on the score and I go ahead and let's say enter a value of 600, I press, now the value of the variable has been updated from zero to 600. So now when I play start, you can see it directly plays this. Now that's fine, that's just a bug. All I have to do is go ahead, go ahead and reset this. So I can select this, reset it. So now if I go ahead and select the value and enter something like 600, and I press start, now you can see it only plays till 600, right? I can go ahead and reset this again. So now here, if I go ahead and choose something like 999, and then I press enter, and I tap on start, now you can see it does all the way towards the end, but then it doesn't play the last one because for the last one, we need to hit exactly 1000, right? So this is how you use variables to set this up. So the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and update this button to have a disabled state so that I can't really tap on it when it is doing because right now I can still tap on it, which is a little weird, right? So we're gonna go ahead and do that in the next video. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next videos. So take care and bye-bye.